Join us as we embark on a journey where we're breaking boundaries, setting new rules, we're making a difference, developing young people. We're the billionaire generation, connecting Africa, promoting entrepreneurship. It's inspiring, positive change. We're kicking doors. <laughs> Welcome back to Kicking Doors Africa. I want to say hello to Ethiopia, Nigeria, shout out to Botswana, Swaziland, Zambia, Zimbabwe. And if I haven't mentioned you, you know, if you're in this uh, beautiful continent of Africa, you're more than welcome on Kicking Doors. My next guest had a dream of seeing the establishment of a black accounting firm that could challenge the status quo of existing firms and compete against the traditionally white firms, you know, big firms. The company's name, Sizu Ntaluba Koboto. I think a lot of us as entrepreneurs have heard about the name. We know a lot about the company and we respect their achievements over the years. Guys, they are celebrating their 30th birthday this year. Congratulations, sir. Thank wow. you so much. You know, uh, Mr. V Victor Segesa, by the way, is one of the most astute business people you'd ever find in this African, on this African continent. And for me to walk in here as just someone from a Tembisa wearing a, a gray suit, and then uh, you walk in here, you're wearing a gray suit too. I, don't, I, I think maybe it means I'm on the right track as an entrepreneur. Can black people build businesses that are going to become a legacy and last for decades and decades and centuries? Yes, I, I think we, we have a few case studies. We started our business way back in 1985, uh, during the difficult time where the uh, institutional arrangements and the framework were such that uh, um, uh, didn't inspire the success of serious economic players by, uh, by black people. Mm. But we, we stuck it uh, in there and we realized and, and identified a niche and we grew uh, against all odds in that. And there are a lot of case studies. When generally people talk about entrepreneur enterprise development, they generally talk about small uh, businesses. But yes. our belief is that um, that concept of uh, enterprise development needs to expand beyond medium size to actually large. Lovely, I love yeah. that. And if I'm sitting in Kenya right now, I'm sitting yeah. in Nigeria, I'm sitting in Angola, what does Sizo and Saluba Koboto do? We are in broadly in the energy industry, uh, telecom uh, industry, um, financial services, and, 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 and also in public sector. We currently have presence in 24 countries uh, in the continent, and we, we believe that the uh, challenges of the continent uh, require African people uh, to uh, provide solutions to that and we believe in the potential of the African continent. Yes, and measures and acquisitions, I know you guys had to go through that period. What happened with that deal? And it took a couple of years, by the way. Yeah, we, we in June 2011, we came together, Sizu and Saluba, VSP as we are known then, and Goboto Incorporated, we came together to form uh, Sizu and Saluba Goboto, the fifth largest uh, accounting firm in Southern Africa, and arguably the largest indigenous firm in Africa. And that was driven by desire, a desire to create a legacy, a desire to, to make a difference, and a desire that we, as African people, can come up um, with something formidable and credible. And it was successful, uh, largely because it was informed by papers. And part of the critical elements of what we focused on was leadership and quality of leadership. And we've invested a lot in developing leadership that will take um, the vision forward. Some of the challenges as black leaders or as black business people running and growing this firm, and not only in your firm, that um, black um, leaders, are, uh, business leaders are experiencing at the top. There's quite a number. I mean, the first one is the issue of uh, market acceptance because you you are moving into a situation where there's long relationships that have been formed. I mean, we are in a, a service industry where generally the business relationship uh, evolve over time. Mm. Now, with us being a new player coming in uh, into the space and and wanting a fair share of that, that has been quite difficult. The role of black women specifically in your company? We we are uh, mindful um, of the fact around transformation of women. We largely employ trainee accountants who want to uh, train as chartered accountants and I'm happy that more than 50% of our staff complement uh, are women. Lovely, that's yeah. what I wanted to hear. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. a lot of companies are yeah. failing to transform and I think it's a beautiful thing the fact that your company recognizes and the role that black women play, especially the fact that now we're getting more and more black um, chartered accountants coming up in the business world. It's a beautiful thing. Now we're going to get into our Q&A session. We might have a couple of questions from our audiences. Any question that you guys 
guys might want to ask Mr. Uh, Victor Segesa. My question that I would like to ask is, how do you find people to bring into your company with the same values as you and that can actually add value into your company the same way you see or you dreamt of your company? In the industry that, that we operate in, um, uh, people are and the most important assets because we, we, we're not in a manufacturing concern where you've got machines and etc. So it's critical that the people that we, we bring on board uh, share um, our purpose um, and, and they share our vision. What we offer, um, we offer an opportunity, an opportunity for young professionals to develop their, their careers. So purpose um, uh, is what we look for, but also uh, the value system. We have values that we subscribe to and we uh, tea and rise. And when we, we uh, interview, we check alignment to, to our value system. Um, that is so the importance of measuring the two companies, I mean your company, your firm and Mama Kobo's company, getting together. How important is it for us as Africans to start looking into partnering? It's, it's very important in a number of respects. And, and I, I think we've proved the myth wrong that black people can can work uh, together. The next step is then to create a legacy, an institution that will look back, that will be a model for success, uh, not only in South Africa, but in the continent. And that's what was, what was driving us. I'd like to know what is your company doing to empower young entrepreneurship in the country, in the continent? I, I, I think we look at ourselves as a model firm for transformation. We've got a lot of activities that we do around um, uplifting uh, young people, young professionals and entrepreneurs as well. Uh, just to mention if you allow me, uh, Sbu, um, we've got a bursary scheme and we spend uh, more than six million um, in our bursary scheme with um, over 80 uh, people, uh, students, uh, beneficiaries that are at universities. Gula pa mungu funa kona pra Victor, because that's my space. Now I'm a young person and watching funa leo pazar. Funa leo pazar ni chola ganja. How do I get in touch with you? I, your company? I tell learners and or students now uh, that it's very easy for you to qualify. What we normally look out for is a uh, good grades. If you are able to be consistent in your grades and 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 get good grades, you stand a very good chance. But how do I apply? Yeah. We you can apply through our our website, which uh, is uh, sng.za.com. Thank you, yes. and it's at the bottom of your screen over there, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Victor Segese. <laughs> Time for the figure behind every powerful man, behind the children of this world, behind every innovative idea to come to the forefront and share her story of success with um, our honorable Timothy Maurice. I'm so excited. We're going to see Swati Martin, the founder of Iswara, Africa's first luxury tea brand. We're here at the West Cliff Four Seasons. And I got to tell you, she's a pioneer in person. And she's decided that it will be a tea brand that will put Africa on the map in terms of how we see luxury. You can see our tea presentation box. So we've actually had a couple of uh, two formats of our tea, loose leaf and also uh, in tea bags. So really the idea of Iswara is to promote the refinement of, I would say, the antiquity of African ele elegance and history. So we're really conveying everything that's beautiful and refined about African culture. So our teas are exclusively African and uh, we tell African stories. So this is very much an environment that fits with the Iswara, I would say, ethos because it's really about meeting time and um, you know, really pampering yourself and, and taking the time to appreciate the product. I do create all the recipes. Uh, the importance is how do we bring African ingredients together? Okay. And also a little bit of African ingredients that you would not necessarily think of drinking, like cola nut. You know, I would describe it as the explosion of um, flavors uh, that the you would have. explosion of flavors, yeah. yeah. The same way your tea sort of exploded onto mm. my taste buds, mm. people think you exploded onto this entrepreneurial scene, but you have a rich background as, a, as an executive. Mm -hmm. uh, you were with GE prior to starting Iswara. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us a bit more about your experience. So I spent 12 years with GE, and I would say uh, some people sometimes question the transition between the corporate world and now being an entrepreneur, but the reality is that uh, since my first day at GE, I was an intrapreneur. So I always went 
for things that were not done before. I always pushed uh, for the business to go to new territories or I was always the person to raise my hand mm. to go and do things that had not been before. From the age of five I knew I wanted to build my own business and building a big business. But I think that also has helped me to almost uh, have a roadmap of how do I get there and also to be patient. So because I had an idea of where I wanted to go, uh, I knew that uh, I had to be patient and build myself in a way to get there. And before actually launching my own company, and I worked for other entrepreneurs because I think it's also important to see the other side. Working with other entrepreneurs, having that entrepreneurial experience without being your own and then kind of having that time to take a step back and thinking, okay, so what are the challenges that I can see uh, I'm facing as part of this team? Uh, how do I think about my own business once I launch it? And how do maybe I not make the same mistakes or try to avo avoid some of those pitfalls and also think about it. So I think it's really thinking carefully about that step and not being in love with your product. I think that's the number one thing is, you shouldn't be so in love with your product and your idea that you actually are not very clear if it's a real business opportunity. Uh -huh. So you need also to have, uh, I would say that very objective look. Is this what I'm going to do, a real business opportunity? Wow. Do, I, do I have the facts? Is there a market for it? Is there demand? Um, how is this market going to grow? really like a consultant looking at a business with no emotional attachment. The reality is a lot of hard work. So are you ready for all the sacrifices? I also believe that you can't have it all. Uh, I think saying that you can have it all uh, just also creates um, unrealistic expectations. You just have to be very realistic about the sacrifices that you're going to have to make sure. in order to build your business. So I would say it's, it's really knowing yourself. I think you need to do also a lot of introspection uh, before starting your entrepreneurial journey. Who is it that you are? What is it that you need? for your personality, for your strength and your weaknesses in order to become that entrepreneur you want to be. Well, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Swaziland, Botswana, Lesotho, we're very excited to be engaging with the entire continent. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's been fun. Thank you very much for hanging out with us tonight. It's been real. It's been inspirational. But that's where we're leaving it for tonight. Um, in case you want to know more, a little bit more about our show, just go to our social media pages, CNBC Africa. You can follow me as well. It's at DJ Sbu on Twitter. I'm also on Instagram, DJ Sbu underscore. Would like for you guys to grow with us every Tuesday evening at 8.30, channel 410. That is a Central African time and get the tools to help you conquer the world. Remember to hit us up, CNBC Africa at DJ Smooth. That hashtag, kicking doors 410. You guys have been lovely. You guys have been nice. I've enjoyed being with you. I love you guys. And I'll see you guys again next week. <laughs>